Hello! Today we will be reading The Worst Band... Ooh, sorry. The Worst Band in the Universe. I found this book, interestingly enough, because I was walking up a hill and... <coughs> excuse me. It just so happens that I've been thinking about starting a band. So anyway, as I was walking up the hill, I found in a free library this book about the worst band in the universe and I thought I wonder if that will be mine <laughs> so let us see <clears throat> so begins here on planet blip beyond the stars beyond the Sun and moon the world was ruled by music but tradition called the tune the ancient songs of ages past were all that could be heard, and no one was allowed to change a single note or word. To write a tune was heresy, to play it even worse, and anyone who improvised was scowled upon and cursed. For years untold, the temple walls had rung to songs of yore, until the day a brave young groove named Sprock rewrote the score. Sprock wasn't strong or worldly wise, just 13 standard years. But in his heart there surged a tune that conquered all his fears. He took his trusty spling twanger, and though he knew twas wrong, he cranked the volume up to 10 and played a brand new song. By the way, everybody, this is Jasmine, who is visiting for the next 10 days. And is now nine. And is what? Oh, and nine more days, yes. Okay, so. <clears throat> the musical inquisitor was grobulous with rage. It's banishment for you, he snarled. Remove him from the stage. A squad of prodmen scuttled up and grabbed Sprock by the scruff. But as they made to drag him off, a voice rang out, Enough! The eldest of the eldest ones, the wisest of the wise, rose slowly to her feet and studied Sprock with ancient eyes. The lad is not a criminal, she finally declared. <coughs> wow, she has a deep voice, doesn't she? His heart is true, just out of tune. I say, he shall be spared. The crowd was in an uproar. The Inquisitor saw red. But judgment had been given. There was no more to be said. The Inquisitor was brought to heel. A sharp humiliation. Repressive tyrants yet to score. Run wound, bleh, run, bleh, want round one to innovation. When everyone had gone, the eldest one took Sprock aside. My son, you have a special gift, but one that you must hide. Our world is not yet ready for the songs you wish to sing. Be patient, Sprock, for comes the day your music will take wing. A sudden pang of sadness seemed to cut her to the core. Another young and restless soul has trod this path before. A boy named Scat, he had the gift. A youngster just like you, if only he had waited. There was nothing I could do. Uh -oh. Pardon me one moment while I deliver here. Janina here to, 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 to here, right, yes, that's right. Okay. Meow. <laughs> oh, it looks very nice there. Okay. <clears throat> so, oh yes, I forgot to show you the illustration. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Later that evening, Sprock found himself at Planet Blip Provincial Spaceport. That night, beneath a violet moon, our hero Sprock was blue. Although he'd not been banished, life on Blip for him was through. 
He gazed up at the endless stars that wheeled above his head. I've got to find a place where I can play my songs, he said. He thought of Scat, a troubled soul cast out from all he'd known, a martyr for his music somewhere out there, quite alone. Perhaps he'd found another home, another place and time, a world where innovation wasn't thought of as a crime. Just then, from far across the veil, he heard an ancient song. A tune he'd known since childhood, he began to sing along. But all at once inside his head, he felt the music change. Unbidden, innovation had begun to rearrange. The harmony soared, the harmony soared skyward as his heart took up the beat. Echoes of the universe, the rhythm of the street, the joy of making something new, the impulse to create. Sprock's music meant the world to him, yet now it sealed his fate. At last he stopped and looked around and slowly shook his head. This planet's lost the plot, he sighed, its spirit cold and dead. There's more to playing music than the notes upon the page. I have to call the tune myself or else forsake the stage. A space bus heading off world was preparing to depart. Sprock climbed up the entry hatch with sad and heavy heart. He turned and looked at Blip, his home. It struck a poignant chord, then took a deep determined breath and boldly stepped aboard. Good. <clears throat> Squag. The arrivals hall at Planet Squag International Spaceport. The moment Sprock arrived on Squag, he felt a sudden chill, as if a silent hand had caused the airwaves to stand still. And, oh, never mind. For a minute there, I thought I wasn't recording. <laughs> no melody, no harmony, no tune or chord or song. A total lack of music. There was clearly something wrong. He powered up his split wanger. The output, output set low and strummed an ancient melody that everyone would know. But instantly, a squad of prodmen scuttled into sight and headed straight for Sprock, who sti stood in bafflement and fright. A stranger who had been watching Sprock from far across the hall moved quickly to his side and pulled him back against the wall. She hit the entry panel on a vacant MTB. Pardon me. It seems you have a problem, friend. You'd better come with me. Stranger pressed a button and the booth began to glow. The fast approaching prodman seemed to suddenly go slow. Sprock felt his body hovering. His head was filled with light. Then in a blinding flash, the spaceport disappeared from sight. an alleyway one nanosecond later. <clears throat> Sprock reappeared in Sector 8, the low-life end of town. The stranger let him stabilize, then looked him up and down. You must be new around these parts on fru or fruzzled in the head. Performing with no license? Rube, right now you should be dead. A license? Sprock was overwhelmed. But why? Whatever for? to keep us quiet. Rules are rules. There's several thousand more. Restrictions on recording. Total bans on playing live. All, reg blah, blah. All regroid beats have prohibited. No rock, no funk, no jive. No music. Sprock stood dismally, head hanging in the rain. 
his dreams of sonic freedom washing slowly down the drain. Cheer up, the stranger took his arm. It's not as bad as that. There's music here, all right. Come on, I'll show you where it's at. She led him down dark alleyway, alleys flanked by walls of plaster rock until they reached an unmarked door. The stranger gave a knock. A secret code was verified, a password softly said, then down into the underworld, young Sprock was duly led. A flood of music met his ears, so rich and warm and deep, the likes of which he'd never heard beyond the realm of sleep. He felt himself enveloped in its magical embrace, a smile that spoke of utter joy upon his upturned face. The stranger led him through the hubbub toward a corner seat where sat a massive crustopod she wanted him to meet. This lump is known as Stickman. Stickman grinned a toothless grin. And I, my friend, am Breather. Welcome to the world within. That night, Sprock played his music as he never had before, a sea of sound that rose and fell upon a rhythmic shore. Nice meshing, space group, Stickman called. You've really got it down. This joint ain't heard a mesh like that since Scatman came to town. You've heard of Scat? Is he on Squag? I can't believe it's true. I heard about him back on Blip. He's just like me and you. But Breather shrugged. I saw him once, a year or more ago. I heard that he had traveled on, but no one seems to know. Just then they felt a shudder, followed by a muffled roar. A mass of rocks and rubble flew across the cavern floor. A gaping hole, a searing light, the sound of stomping feet. And with a rope, with a, and with a roar, a dozen prod men burst in from the street. Come on, yelled Breather. Time to split. The gig is getting rough. Those grooves look like they want to play, but I've had quite enough. Sprock tried his best to follow, but the rubble made him trip. Then all at once he felt himself in a vice-like grip. The musical inquisitor sneered, sneered cruelly at his prey. My dear young Sprock, we meet again. This really makes my day. Still making up our little tunes. Tut, tut, you cause me pain. This time I'll have to see it. See to it, you never play again. Bring out the bulk eraser. We've an innovator here. Who thinks he has some talent? Let us make it disappear. A sudden twist, a well-aimed kick. He fainted toward the right and Sprock was racing up the street and off into the night. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> oh, did I? Yeah. I did? Oh, well, there you go again. <laughs> Sprock found the others waiting for him further up the lane. Those raids are getting worse, said Breather. Snoutface strikes again. I wish we could get out of here. Those prodmen are such creeps. But off-world tickets don't come cheap. Looks like we're here for keeps. An auto droid came skittering along the alleyway, a roll of posters bouncing in its general purpose tray. It quickly slapped a poster up, glanced back along the street, and darted off again upon its spindly metal feet. The poster says, The worst band in the universe. Does your band make the grade? First prize, a trip to Alpha 10. All expenses paid. All life forms free to enter. See below for where and when. You've got to play to get away. It's party time again. The worst band, chortled Sprock. Hey guys, this gig sounds pretty weird. But Breather told him here on Squawk, the title was revered. 
and aim to wear with pride, my friend, a truly worthy goal. Who'd want to be the best band in this grobulescent hole? Sprock read the bit again about the trip to Alpha 10. A chance like that was just too good. It might not come again. He turned back to others. Well, we've nothing much to lose. We'd better start rehearsing if we're going to win that cruise. This is a, this is a kind of a, is a long story, isn't it? <laughs> Quite a bit. Yes, is it okay? I mean, do you it's like very it? Very well. Yes. yes? Okay. <clears throat> so then, <clears throat> what happens? So, the venue was a warehouse down in Sector 84. That's where the band's going to play. The glowing competition host was waiting at the door. Step right this way, my grooblets. Let the tournament begin. Sprock thought he saw the slightest wink. And may the worst band win. Well, my band's not there, so... Okay, inside they found a mass of musos meshing all at once. A credulous cacophony of clicks and snorts and grunts. A band of bogloids, heaps of gleeps, a nest of hydrobugs. Some pangazordan pokebums, a squeegling of slugs. A family of frugal snacks, centaurans by the score, a pair of long-eared slatermen, a giant omnivore. Such fabulous diversity. To name them all would spoil it. And they were just the life forms who were queuing for the toilet. Our heroes struggled through the crowd to sound stage 42 and kicked off with a trucking song that everybody knew. The host declared them winners of their class in section one, then moved on to the second round. The contest had begun. Thanks for listening. <laughs> okay, so, oh yes, next page. For seven days and nights, the competition raged, the most bizarre display of innovation ever staged. At last, the hall fell silent. Every band had done its worst. They waited now with bated breath to find out who'd come first. I mean, who'd come, come first in being worst. The host stepped to the microphone, a wild look in his eyes. Is that wild enough? <laughs> the judge has reached a verdict. Let us, no, let us see who's won the prize. He held loft, aloft an envelope and ripped it clear in two. The winner is, he paused and looked around. Why, Sprock? It's you! The worst band in the universe! They staggered back in shock. We've won the competition! We are out of here, cried Sprock. They whooped and yelled like crazy things. They leapt in sheer delight. No time for that, the host declared. You've got to catch your flight! He led them quickly from the stage, straight to the waiting ship. It's set to automatic. Just sit back, enjoy the trip. If I were you, I'd get some rest. You've quite a ride in store. Be seeing you around, I guess. He grinned and slammed the door. I smell something fishy. What about you? Smells pretty suspicious. See, that was a bit too easy, wasn't it? Hmm. Deep space a few hours later. The band was watching Tri V on the main transmission screen, a sitcom starring some new band from Alpha 17. When suddenly the host appeared, that glowing golden smile. This program has been terminated. Do not touch your dial. He flashed a set of perfect teeth. Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> the smile became a laugh. <laughs> And then a dreadful cackling howl that split his face in half. Sorry, I can't do that either. Um, the golden mask turned inside out, revealing in its stead the musical Inquisitor. Surprise, surprise, he said. He looked at Sprock. Now there's a face I've seen somewhere before. You thought you had me beaten. Well... Let's even up the score. 
Prepare ye for oblivion, you innovative scum. Your feeble tunes are all played out, and now my time has come. I have a dream, a brave new world, where every note is fixed. All tunes shall be performed in sea, the ancient songs remixed. A realm of sonic purity, the purging of creation, and absolutely, positively, zero innovation. One moment, please. One moment. We are taking a brief inter... We are taking a brief kitty cat intermission. A brief kitty cat intermission. That's right. That's your right. You like it there with Jasmine, right? Jasmine is training Janina. Okay, where were we? Where's the book? Oh, there's the book. <clears throat> Of course, these new arrangements mean some changes at the top. The eldest one has had her day. She's ready for the chop. You leave her be, yelled Sprock, but the Inquisitor was gone, his laughter slowly fading as the spaceship hurtled on. <coughs> one minute. Pardon me. A minute later, sirens blared, the seatbelt flashing red. All crew prepare for hyperjump, the auto autopilot said, and then a void, a sense of loss, the future flashing by. The ship leapt 90 light years in the blinking of an eye. They reappeared in orbit round a planet small and green, a jungle world, the readout told them, waste dump B-19. A warning buzzer sounded. Waste pod seven, clear to go. A jolt, and they were falling to the unknown world below. Oh, look at her. <laughs> she's in the burrito. Yeah, she's in the burrito. <clears throat> so they're on waste dump B-19. Where are we? Muttered Breather as they struggled from the pod. Some kind of jungle, Sprock replied. It sure feels pretty odd. He gazed up at a foreign sky, a swirling starless dome. One thing's for sure, he sighed. We're all along, long way from home. They waited from the waste pod. Sprock looked nervously around. I'd swear the jungle's listening, just waiting for a sound. The, this place has got me spooked, said Stickman. How about a song? He tapped his stick and sticks and hummed a tune. Come on, guys, sing along. At once, a dozen creepers slithered toward them from the trees. They're searching for the sounds, Brock whispered. Everybody freeze. They stood as still as statues while around them swayed the creepers. A terrifying real-life game of jungle finders keepers. <clears throat> Some unseen creatures made a noise, an injudicious squeal. The creepers pounced upon it, and the squeal became a meal. The band looked on in horror as the vines devoured their prey, then with a shudder turned and tiptoed quietly away. They crept along in silence, not a whisper, not a word. Poor Stickman didn't dare to think in case the creepers heard. But finally the jungle thinned. They stepped into the light and found spread out before them an extraordinary sight. A vast metallic landscape met their disbelieving gaze. An interstellar junkyard disappearing in the haze. A figure sat there watching them. And what do we have here? Another bunch of frusled groobs? Must be that time of year. A hundred other aliens were perched amongst the junk. All kinds of musos, neutro, alloy, hyper and funk. But one was clearly in command. He spoke from where he sat. This here is Waste Dump B-19. And I, my friends, am scat. It's Scat, cried Sprock. I can't believe it's really you. Oh, wow. Scat watched with mild amusement. 
Then he gave a mocking bow. And you, no doubt, are winners of a certain talent quest. The worst band of the universe. Ah, yes, I might have guessed. Don't look surprised. You're not the first. This happens every year. The thrilling win, the cheering crowds, and then you disappear. We've all been there before, my friend, from old hand to beginner. So welcome to the worst band club, where everyone's a winner. Well, it should be over soon, but kind of exciting, right? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> The band was stunned, poor stick man wept. Sprock too was close to tears. To think this vile deception had been going on for years. There must be some escape, he cried, some spaceship we can use. The eldest one's in danger. There's no time for us to lose. Be cool, said Scat. So what? Who cares? It isn't our concern. Remember, you've been banished, group. No refund, no return. Sprock shook his head. You're kidding, right? There's got to be a way. The universe needs saving. Scat, you can't sit there all day. Hey, zip your lip, Scat snapped at Sprock. I'm head group on this rock. And how about you show a little leadership, said Sprock. Scat's betray face betrayed a sudden rage. Is that good for rage? <laughs> <laughs> he raised his power axe. Sprock's fingers gripped his spling twanger, the volume set to max. But suddenly a snake-like shadow fell across the scene. Look out, a gulper, someone cried. Sprock saw a flash of green. Scat hammered on his power axe, a massive pulse of sound. Sprock heard a splat, and bits of creeper rained down on the ground. Scat flicked the power axe to off and slung it by his side. The gulpers hear your every word. There's nowhere you can hide. My power lax alone can keep the writhing horde at bay. That's why I'm boss, he glared at Sprock, then turned and strode away. When Scat had gone, a button pusher waddled from the crowd. Er, hi, he mumbled. Look, I wouldn't dare say this aloud, but, well... I have this theory, though of course I may be wrong. He handed Sprock a drawing. It's a ship that sails on song. A music-powered spacecraft? Breather frubled through her snouts. It's possible, I guess, she shrugged. And yet I have my doubts. Scat says that it will never fly, the little guy confided. We'll try it, Sprock declared at once. The matter is decided. What kind of music do you think makes the spaceship take off? Horrible music. Horrible music. OK, let's find out. The task was huge, the concept vague, the physics somewhat moot. But once the seed of hope was sown, it gradually took root. They labored with the flame of freedom burning in their hearts. A hammer, seven drill bits, and an endless source of parts. And slowly from the rubble grew a glorious creation, a flimsy pile of rusted junk, the means of their salvation. You'll never make it fly, said Scat, and even if you do, the gulpers will devour the lot and take you with it, too. You're right, said Sprock. Without your help, we'll never get away. But if this works, we'll send a rescue ship without delay. Scat turned on Sprock in anger. Who asked you to interfere? We don't want you to save us. Can't you see we're happy here? You're happy here? When every note you play could be your last? When people live in fear of sound, Sprock looked at Scat, aghast. I really thought you'd help us, Scat, for everybody's sake. I thought you were a leader, not a loser. My mistake. Scat stared at Sprock. His face went pale. The truth was all too stark. Then silently he turned away. Sprock's words 
had found their mark. They watched him go. This isn't good, said Stickman with a groan. At least you tried, said Breather. Looks like we're on our own. Jasmine, do you think they're going to get away? Ha. No. no? Okay, let's see. <clears throat> At last the ship was finished. Sprock called everyone around. All right, said Sprock, I'll count you in. Then you guys make some sound. They climbed aboard and set the sails to capture every note. A gallant bid for freedom in a tiny homemade boat. Let's mesh, cried Sprock. The music flowed. The sails began to fill, but from the jungle swarmed the gulpers. Closing for the kill. We need more power, Breather yelled. The EQ is going to blow. The treble's overloading, and the bass is way too low. Transposing to a higher key, Sprock shouted from the bow. Let's try F sharp, he cried, and cast the line off from the prow. The spaceship slowly strung around and lifted from the ground. We're taking off. It really works. A ship that sails on sound. But even as he spoke, the gulpers reached out to the ship, enveloping the vessel in their vegetable grip. Poor button pusher tumbled from his perch atop the mast. The sonic sails flapped uselessly. The ship was sinking fast. Then came a sudden blast of sound. The gulpers writhed and squirmed. It's scat, cried Sprock in wonderment. The sonic tide had turned. Scat hammered on his power axe. The gulpers split asunder and Sprock and crew soared skyward on a rolling wave of thunder. Scat watched until the ship had gone, a tiny speck with wings. Hey, Buttonhead, what say you make another of those things? But this time, make it really big, with lights and lots of chrome. The universe needs saving, Groobs. It's time we headed home. On Sprock's home planet, a year had passed. Does it feel like a year has passed since we started this story? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe two. Maybe two? Oh, God, so you don't like it? I do. Okay, well, it's almost over. Okay, yes, let's see. <clears throat> Beneath a dark, forbidding sky that spoke of storms and rain, the blessing of the bling twangers was underway again. A squad of prodmen, grim and silent, faced the restless crowd. The musical inquisitor stook, stood arrogant and proud. For far too long the tuneful worlds have wallowed in decay, bereft of moral principles, with none to show the way. The eldest one is old and weak. It's time she stood aside. From now on, I'm the ruler of the universe. He cried. The eldest one rose slowly and looked deep into his eyes. Perhaps if we add a little drama here. <laughs> but all she saw was emptiness, depravity, and lies. She turned to face the audience. Well, what say all of you? Is this the one to lead us? Is he virtuous and true? The crowd glanced at the prod men and looked nervously away. It seemed that the Inquisitor was going to win the day. He stood before them unopposed, the president-elect. Then suddenly a voice rang out. Your Honor! Oh, sorry. I object! <laughs> Who do you suppose is objecting? Hmm? Uh, the little speck or sprock? Speck! No, sprock. <laughs> sprock. Yes. The musical inquisitor looked sharply down the aisle. Sprock stood there with his bling twanger and answered with a smile. Hello again. Remember me? You've met my friends before. It seems that we are just in time to settle an old score. 
I exercise my ancient right in keeping with tradition. The ruler of the universe must face some competition. The musical inquisitor rocked backwards on the stage. You dare to challenge me? He shrieked in shock as much as rage. You got it, snout man, Sprock replied, and switched to overdrive. The worst band in the universe is coming to you live. <laughs> and that is a signal of the band coming. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he rattled off a stunning line that sent the prod men reeling, a triple octave mega riff with a whammy bar and feeling. Well put, remarked the eldest one. This calls for a reply. She turned to the Inquisitor. I trust you're going to try. But all at once his face had paled. He stood there hesitating. Come on now, said the eldest one. Don't keep your public waiting. A wave of panic crossed his face. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> a look of wild despair. Yes? Okay. He searched within for talent and discovered nothing there. Then through the temple came a voice, a child, as clear as day. Look, Mommy, said the little voice, the funny man can't play. <clears throat> the people saw the child was right. He couldn't play a chord. The musical inquisitor was nothing but a fraud. Hey, chord and fraud don't rhyme. Oh, oh well. We'll let it go this time. He stood there in his impotence, their laughter in his ears. And deep inside a madness grew that drowned out all the jeers. Go on and laugh, he snarled at them. He, he snarled at them. Go on and have your fun, for soon you'll know the sound of fear. This show has just begun. You've made a fatal error. You've got me all annoyed. If I can't rule the tuneful worlds, then they shall be destroyed. He pressed a secret button. That's what happens when you press the secret button. Mm -hmm. You get a little ringing sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On his built-in microphone. And suddenly his spaceship took a life all of its own. It reared above their heads, a diabolical machine. The biggest hi-fi system that the world had ever seen. A lightning bolt lit up the sky. He held aloft a tape and thrust it in his spling twanger. The crowd tried to escape, but instantly there came a noise that shook them to the bone. A numbing flood of drivel. Pardon. Random access digidrone. The people staggered in the aisles. Some fell upon the ground. Some so mindless was the music. So monotonous was the sound. Sprock tried to play his spling twanger, but soon was overcome. He slumped against the speaker stacks, his mind and fingers. Numb. What do you think is going to happen? Do you not know? Do you think, think? Do you think they will be saved? <clears throat> Let's find out. Let's see. We have for anybody who is interested. We have just two pages. But we've have we enjoyed this? <laughs> <laughs> we have, right? I hope. Okay. <clears throat> then suddenly a ship appeared, like some enormous bat. It skidded to a screeching halt. And from it bounded scat. Behold the lost musicians of the universe, he cried. You've played your last, Inquisitor. There's nowhere you can hide. They stormed the giant speakers, but the droning forced them back. Their instruments fell to the ground. Their hearts and minds went black. You fools, cried the Inquisitor. No one can stop me now. This is the final chorus, and the last note is kapow! Then all at once a chord rang out, a clear and ringing tone that soared above the blandness of the awful digidrone. All ears turned to the eldest one, 
her spling twanger had spoken, the darkness seemed to clear away. The evil spell was broken. Arise, she cried. The hour has come. Together we must fight. Let ancient song and innovation finally unite. The crowd stood up their instruments and with it up, sorry. The crowd took up their instruments and rallied to the call. The lost musicians, Blippians, united, one and all. Sprock played his trusty spling twanger, the throttle open wide. The worst band in the universe, all meshing by his side. The sound that they created pierced the droning like a knife. The eager blade of constant change, the cutting edge of life. The musical inquisitor began to gag and choke as overhead the giant hi-fi billowed clouds of smoke. His spling twanger exploded, tangled tape flew everywhere, a frightful squeal of rending steel, then silence filled the air. The temple lay in ruins. Sprock was nowhere to be seen, but then a muffled groan was heard from where the stage had been. Sprock staggered from the wreckage, and the waiting crowd went wild. The eldest one embraced him. Welcome home, my son, she smiled. The musical inquisitor sat sobbing on the ground, the remnants of his spaceship lying scattered all around. His dreams of domination fled like shadows in the sun, the rain had stopped, the clouds rolled back, a new day had begun. Rejoice, exclaimed the eldest one. Rejoice in our salvation, for thanks to Sprock, the cosmos has escaped annihilation. Repression has been vanquished by the forces of creation, the armor of tradition, and the sword of innovation. The right to play new music lies with every generation, regardless of their vocal range or rhythmic inclination. The future lies before us, filled with boundless variation. Lift up your voices, sing, sing your songs. This calls for celebration. Yes, did you like it? I did. On a scale of one to 10, with one being really horrible and 10 being superb. A six. a six? Well, I hope you all enjoyed this more than a six. <laughs>